Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're on episode number 167. Today is May 1st, beginning of a brand new month. My name is Craig Prowse and joining me as always, Mandrew Montemayor. Um, a little a little worse for wear on your travels, my friend. I know you'll dive into it, but how are you feeling? I, I'm just tired. Like, I'm sure you could see it right now. Like, I'm just when so you walked in early, I was like, because I, I know we're recording a little bit in the afternoon, and I was like, man, you still look a little sleepyhead. Dude, I didn't want to get out of bed today. I was like, I'm so glad I took today off. Well, you texted me, like, way early in the morning, and I figured, I'm like, oh, because oh. I saw when you were last online, it was like, when I looked at it, it was like X amount of hours ago. I'm like, that had to have been like four in the, mor <laughs> four in the morning. It was. I was going to... <laughs> play until like midnight and then get off but i forgot to download it and so then i had to Aww. wait like an extra hour so then yeah i ended up playing till like four but no i had to take my brothers to school uh right now because my mom's schedule is all weird they it's like right around the corner for me so i got up at seven took them and then went back home and went back to bed there you go sometimes you just gotta crawl back into those uh those covers and hit that pillow yeah you're like oh all right since you're up get as much star wars in as you can i'm like yeah sure <laughs> yeah i'll do that later so uh guys uh welcome to the show if you're watching the youtube version of the show make sure you like comment subscribe hit the share button and hit that notification bell if you are interested in following us on any of our social media our link tree link is in the description of the youtube video you can click that and follow us on those and if you guys are listening to the audio only version of this podcast uh, find us on whatever podcast platform you prefer to listen to. We're on all the big ones. So I did want to start out saying we are recording this um, on Monday uh, just because um, there was a couple things. Edge was out of town, and he'll dive into that a little bit later. And plus, our main story is going to be about Star Wars. So we wanted to give as much time as we could to try to play as much of it as we can. But before we dive into that, guys, we like to do... What are you up to? When Andrew and I take a second, talk about anything we've been playing, anything we've been watching, anything we've been up to. So Andrew just had a nice uh, big trip. So hey, why don't you tell the kids at home what you went to go do? I went to Universal Studios so that way I could go to Super Mario World as seen by this shirt that I am wearing. So I actually had an amazing time. Unfortunately, I found out that I get motion sick very easy. So I didn't. I wasn't able to go on a lot of the rides, but the stuff I did go on, I did have fun. But more importantly... I did make it into Super Mario World, so I kind of have just like a quick little a little pros, a little cons, and then I do have some very important tips, so any of you guys who are planning on going, there's stuff in there that I wish I'd known beforehand that would have made it so much better, so much easier. As far as the pros, I, I really like it. It was a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be, and when you're like going around the park, like because you're taking escalators to the park, like we're going down towards like Jurassic Park. It's massive. Like, it's a whole big section of the park. Like, it's so cool. And there's really a lot to do in there. There's, like, a lot. So it's not just the ride. I wish they had, obviously, more. But they have, like, little games you could play. Um, they have that Toad Soul Cafe. Unfortunately, it was closed for some reason because I think it was, like, booked. But something I liked is if you do buy those bands, I bought me and Christina both bought one. I got a Luigi band. Oh, you should I should work. <laughs> I should have, but I forgot when I walked out the door. Um... They're, they're like 40 bucks, which sounds expensive, but it does do cool things when you go around the park. I'm sure you've seen it. Like, if you hit a box, it makes noise, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you see everybody else and all the other people trying to do it and it doesn't do anything, and then you go over and do it, you're like, oh, man, that's How loud cool. is it? Is it loud enough to where everyone hears it? Yeah, no, it's okay, loud yeah. enough to where you <laughs> hear, you're hearing place. coins go off all day in there. Plus, it's not just that. There's, like, hidden, like, um, mushroom symbols and stuff, and if you put your watch up to it, like, it showed, like, the old school, like, Peach from, uh, like, Super Mario 1, like, on the wall, like, oh, kind of cool. running around and stuff. But... There's seven different keys around the park. Like, they give you a map, and you can check in on the app, and it kind of shows you where to go to. And it also tells you the times of stuff, so you can, like, meet up with Luigi and Mario. I'm trying to push these kids out of the way so I can get close to Peach. <laughs> but uh, there's seven keys, and there's a whole section that's, like, a mini. There's the big castle, which is where the ride is, and then there's a mini castle. The mini castle you actually cannot get into unless you have the wristband. Oh, that's cool. And even more dedicated to it you cannot get into it if there's seven other activities you can do for the keys you have to have done at least three of them just to be able to oh, get you into the pay to play huh so i'm like man that's actually pretty cool and that makes it worth it for that thing because it's only 40 bucks but still that other stuff looked pretty cool i mean i had a whole grip that i was traveling with so i didn't get to stay in and do that stuff as long as i wanted to but i definitely want to go back and try that so i thought that was cool the only big con i had for that especially it, it's just busy Especially right now, it's not their fault. The way they're kind of doing things kind of doesn't make sense. So that's something to figure out over time. But I definitely felt like it left me wanting more. Because, yeah, there's only one ride. But based off this now, I'm like, man, I don't understand why you... Or hopefully you have plans for knock down some more. Expand this into, like, a from Mario Land 
can join with the Donkey Kong Land. And then even if you want to do a haunted section, you could do like a Luigi's Mansion or something. So that was the only con That'd I had. Cool. Is like for only having the one ride, I wish there was more. Because I think if you look at the one in Orlando and the one in, I think there's like one in Japan or something like that. That there's like another ride where you get in a Yoshi and it's not really a ride, but it's more like a tour of the park and you're just kind of riding around and doing whatever and you're seeing everyone and looking at everything. I'm like, even that would have been pretty cool just to do, especially for someone like me who gets motion sickness that I can't do the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, that sucks, man. <laughs> now, for as far as the tips go, I only have a couple here. The most important one I'll give you first. It did not tell us this. Nowhere at all did I see this. We almost didn't get into Mario World. When you go in there, before you even go in there, before you even go to the park, download the Universal Studios app. I have it on my phone. <laughs> so you download it, and on there, there's a section for the Mario World. You can go in there. I don't know how early it starts, but it fills up quick. You actually have to get a digital reservation. Wow. So it has you do it by times. We barely walked in the park. I had time to go in the store. We bought our watches. We come back out. The only reason I had the app is because I was setting up my uh, my little watch thing to sync with it. And then there's a sign that says to get in, digital reservations only. So we're looking at it. We don't understand how it works because you're picking there and then you can do how many people you have. And it showed a couple times. By the time we were – and this is within two minutes. By the time we're like, oh, okay, we'll do ten people for nine o'clock to whatever – it was already done Oof. within that two minutes. It was already full for the day. And we thought maybe the app was broken. So we went all the way down there because it's by the Jurassic Park section. I asked this guy, I'm like, hey, man, this thing's not working. Is that, is that like how it is? He's like, yeah, unfortunately, there's no way that we can guarantee you to get into the park. You just have to check it throughout the day and hope that there's an opening. And either there is or there isn't That's is what he told weird. me. And so we went and did other stuff. I happened to check the app again. And this was still at like 10 and our, and I was able to get us in and we, oh, most of us were doing it on the app. So that way we made sure we all got in and we had like 20 spots saved. So it might've screwed over someone else, but whatever. <laughs> but we had, to, we ended up getting our spot for 440 in the afternoon. Like that's Damn. how late it was. So that is the number one thing is make sure you do that first if you're going there. Cause otherwise you aren't getting in and they don't tell you that anywhere else. Cause even when we were buying our watch, the lady, after she sold it to us and put it in the bag, she's like, all right, well, there's no guarantee you can get in the park here, no refunds. Aww. And I'm like, oh, all right, cool, man. <laughs> so the other thing I would recommend too, highly recommend, is get the Fast Pass. It is totally worth it, especially because the day we went, the entire park was sold out. So it was insanely busy. Some of the lines don't take as long as they say. When I was in Jurassic Park, it said 50 minutes. It was only 20 to wait through. But like the Mario one, it said 100 minutes. It was long as hell. So that Fast Pass, you're skipping everything. And don't think you're going to get in faster by doing the singles line because we tried doing that with my cousins. You're going to wait even longer because that's what I'm talking about. With they don't know what the, how they're supposed to get everyone in. So just do the quads, you'll be in. And the final thing I would say is if you can... Go on like a school day or something like that when no one else is going to be there. Because, yeah, there was a ton of kids and stuff. I guarantee you it would have been like half as filled had it not. Again, we only did this because certain people could only go on this day. Otherwise, that's kind of what we were going to try to do ourselves. But, again, most important thing, do that schedule. Because if not, you are not going to be able to get in. And then you've just wasted your I was super pissed off because I was like, dude, I drove for hours. I paid all this money. This was the one thing I wanted to do. I'm not even going to get in. So for two hours, I was pissed. How recent did it open? I mean, I wonder if it's just because it's just so new still, you think? I think it opened in like February. Oh, okay. So it's been a little It was either like February or March. So it's been like a little bit. So that's why I say they're still trying to get stuff together. But I think this thing is going to be crazy busy no matter what. Because even towards the end of the day when it was super cold, everyone was st everyone started flooding down there. And what I can only assume is they got whatever the latest times it is at that play i don't know how late that mario section stays open but after we were coming up and doing all of our other stuff like towards like seven there was people like flooding down there i'm like man i'd hate to be down there with all these people getting last minute worth to go back again i would go back again but not right away like a I, year or so yeah like a year or so for them to figure out the bugs maybe see if they add more do something new but i'm also like burnout because i got up <laughs> I, hurt. I got up at like 5 50 it's a 45 minute drive we got there at eight and we didn't leave there until like midnight. Oof. And so uh, that I'm like worn out from that. <laughs> Are your little feetsies hurting? <laughs> no, they're not too bad now. The day, like that night though, like taking a shower, I thought I was going to have to like sit down for a little bit. I'm like, dude, I'm exhausted. <laughs> but other than that, it was great though. I loved it. I had such a good time at Universal. I've never been there before. And I thought the Mario Land was really cool. And it definitely left me like, man, 
I don't understand why you're not doing more. Or maybe Nintendo should have opened... I'm sure there's probably too much for them to do. Open your own theme park and then take all your different game people and have their own sections of a land or something like that. And then maybe they could all meet for like a Super Smash section. Like, it, it would be so cool that that place would be busy nonstop. I love it. But either way, definitely get out there if you can and check that schedule. Nice. What about you? What would you do this uh, weekend? As far as what I have been up to is I wa- ended up watching um, that Peter Pan and Wendy movie that's on... Uh, Disney Plus, it dropped on April 28th. It seems to be doing okay with the critics. It's got like a 67 on Rotten Tomatoes, 66 on Metacritic. IMDb gave it a 4.4 4 out of 10. Oof. I'll say this. It's not bad, but it's it's not great by any means. I mean, one of the things that it kind of does is it has an, it has an in, like a more in-depth storyline between <coughs> um, Hook and Peter Pan. And I do got to say, the cast of The Darlings... I actually like so the people that were playing um, Michael, John, and Wendy. I absolutely love the chick that was playing Tiger Lily was awesome. Um, Jim Gaffigan as Smee, Drew Law as Captain Hook. It was an awesome little combo. Um, the one of the things that Disney is finding itself constantly like in trouble with is the whole kind of wokeness thing. And you know whether you're for it or you're against it, it's it's whatever. But Disney seems to never be able to come out on the right side of it. It's always like they either do too much or too little, and they always get kind of hit with it but about tiger lily in this no tiger lily no she's in it and she's got a bigger part but i'm what i'm saying is more is the person they cast as peter pan isn't traditionally you know it's traditionally a white male in this one it's not it's played by alexander milani and tinkerbell who's usually you know white is played by um uh african-american named yari shahidi and i gotta say they're actually great in the roles the the kid playing peter pan I, I I don't know what he's from. I don't, I've never seen anything that he's done. I thought he was going to be kind of soft spoken, but he was he was cool, man. He had the charm. He had the bravado. He had the the fighting skill down. Um, the chick playing Tinkerbell, I thought was very. She had she was very expressful. Like the way she played Tinkerbell was actually pretty cool. Um, Better than uh, God, I can't think of her oh, name with uh, a big mouth. Uh, from Hook. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Why can't I think of her name now, too? Because I keep thinking of Julia Roberts. We'll Moore. get back to oh, yeah, okay, okay. But, uh, what are the things? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. There you go. Um, I would say it's okay. If you're interested in, in, in Peter Pan lore, it's worth checking out. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I went to Disney Plus because I think this thing would have got killed if it would have went to theaters. How Little Mermaid's going to theaters. But it had a lot of things that pulled from the book as well as the old cartoon that I liked a lot. My biggest issue that I didn't like is usually when someone plays Captain Hook, they play Mr. Darling. It's usually the same guy or the same voice talent. And in this one, it wasn't. It was Jude Law playing Captain Hook and Alan Tudyk playing Mr. Darling. Not a big deal, but if you're a fan of Peter Pan, like lore and stuff like that, that did kind of stand out. So I would say if you're interested in it, it's worth checking out. But if it's not on your radar, it's easily uh, skippable. As far as what... I'll pass. Yeah, I mean, you definitely could, and I wouldn't hold anything against you. But I, I, I'd, I'd be curious if like Gino watched it and see what his thoughts are. As far as what I've been playing, um, I did beat Chained Echoes. I'm not going to dive too much into that because the last two episodes I've talked about it. I will just say that um, it was great. It was definitely that nice like 16-bit RPG I was looking for. It really makes me want to grab the Final Fantasy Pixel remaster games because I'm in good. I'm in a Discord. And there's a couple people that are constantly posting that they're, they're beating them. So as a kid, I remember them taking longer, but I guess you can kind of cruise I, through them with I all the boosters on them. they have a lot of boosters them. and stuff. Um, so yeah, and it's got a good, it's got a bunch of good RP- JRPG stuff. It's got optional characters that you can miss, you know, unless you go look for them. It's got ultimate weapons and it's got a secret boss fight at the end. I haven't done the secret boss fight yet because right after I was done, I started playing Jedi. So once I'm done with Jedi, I think I'm going to go back and try to clean that up and see what that's all about. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention mm-hmm. I beat Ghostwire Tokyo. Oh, did you? I did do that before I left. I made sure I beat that. <laughs> How was the ending? Because I think I might dive back into it, but I, you never know. I like that. Dude, the game's not that long. Like, I finished it in, like, eight hours. That's not bad. So I was like, dude, this is cool. I Instead of running around and, like, clearing out everything, all, like, the little temples to clear the fog and stuff, I just beeline straight for the story, and then I did a couple extra achievements. So you don't really need to do all the other stuff to get powers or anything? No, you can just beat it normally, because all the other, it gives you extra stuff, but, again, the rest of that is really just if you want to do, like, collectibles, but that game has so many yeah, collectibles. Yeah, that was the I was biggest like, thing I'm, I remember looking at. I was like, I'm out on that. But, no, the story was cool, especially because, again, it's just, like, kind of smaller and i i liked it for what it was i'm like oh man this is pretty interesting i thought it was very different i actually ended up liking it a lot more than what i thought i was going to good yes i might go back and play because i was playing on the ps5 but 
I might do it on the actual Xbox. Yeah, I'd say if you have eight hours and you just want to play something different, I think it's very cool. I think it was worth it. I like that. So as far as the last thing I was doing is um, I've been trying to get into more of some reading, and I've been reading some other books, but I, I told you a couple weeks ago that I ordered The Last Ronin, and uh, I finished that. And it's, So that's a graphic novel. It's originally a comic book, but that came out in 20... 20 and um, it actually reunites Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird who are the original creators and they actually um, Worked on this together. Dude. The artwork is awesome. The storyline yeah, is, is great. Good the, the fighting is brutal I know Gino said he wanted to borrow it, but if it is something you want to borrow I've got it and I, I read through it in a day. I mean, it's nothing. Oh, crazy, yeah, yeah so. for sure Yeah, after Gino's done, I'll borrow it. You can definitely cruise through it. So I'll borrow it in the move cross, <laughs> cross the US. <laughs> So that's as far as what we've been up to, guys. Um, a little long on that one, but we had a lot of stuff going on uh, this past week. And so let us know down in the comments below what you've been watching, what you've been playing, and anything else you may or may not have been up to. So Let me know if you've been to Mario World and what you thought. Yeah, I'm curious of how many people in our orbit have actually uh, tried that out. So uh, with that being said, guys, let's dive into our main story. And that is that Star Wars Jedi Survivor is out. It came out on April 28th. It is one of the fully next-gen games, be meaning... You can only play it on the PS5, the Series X and S, as well as the PC. The game has been pushed back, I think, at least at least once. I know its original date was on March 17th. I don't know if it had multiple pushes, but so far this I don't game... I the one. Yeah, so far this game is kind of having a rough start, even though the reviews are pretty good. So what I kind of wanted to do is cover a few of the issues that this game is having, just so it's on your guys' radar, and then Andrew and I will kind of dive into our initial takes on the game so i want to start off with this first and that is that there are reports that the pc version has come out pretty much broken it was a, it was really not playable it was really down and there are quite a few bugs with the xbox and the ps5 so um there's going to be patches as of today on the first um there's a patch coming out and then tomorrow there's going to be a bunch of these bugs that are getting fixed so i just kind of want to read this out just so it's weird to think that this many bugs are still launching in a game that's that already got pushed back you think when these things come out that all this stuff is taken care of so as of today the performance improvements uh for non-ray trace rendering is something that's going to be uh patched up and fixed but starting tomorrow for the ps and that was for the pc as far as the ps5 and the xbox series goes um, these are all the things that are going to be uh, taken care of. Uh, multiple crashes fixed across PS and Xbox in various areas of the game. Fixed crashes that were tied to skipping cinematics. Performance improvements across PS5 and Xbox. Fixed uh, an issue with dynamic cloth inside the Mantis. Fixed various rendering issues. Fixed uh, issues with registered Nekos or Nikos. Fixed issues with cinematic dialogue overlapping. I have seen that one and it's annoying as shit. Fixed various collision issues. Fix an issue with enemy AI remaining in T-pose during photo mode. Fixed a freeze that occasionally occurred while talking to Doma. Fixed a bug where the BD oil uh, visual effects did not properly render. And then here was one of the big ones. Fixed an issue where players were getting stuck inside the chamber of duality if you didn't save after the, leaving the chamber and die. And so I was kind of curious, Andrew, do you think... I mean, that's a lot of things for a day one thing to be, you know, instantly if you're playing this game, that's a lot of things to kind of encounter. Do you think that's egregious that a game is launching? And I'm not saying games don't launch with bugs, but we're getting to the point where why are we still having this many issues on hardware that's supposed to be running a lot smoother, a lot faster? Things are getting pushed back daily for polish. So do you think this is pretty egregious that, we're, that people are having to deal with all of this? Or is this just kind of, it is what it is and games have bugs and this just happened to be all the bugs that it has. I think that this one maybe gets... I, it's probably getting the past because, again, it's gotten lots of nines and stuff as far as the reviews go, but there's been lots of games that have come out that are far more broken than this that I guess maybe that's the thing now, too, is looking at this, I've played games that have been way worse and run way worse and been in a worse state. But looking at this, I'm like, ah, it's not that bad, especially for me playing it, but I am playing I'm like, ah, some things I'm like, ah, fuck man like this is this is annoying like why am i having to deal with this on day one with a premium 70 dollars title that's supposed to be running yeah like so I, I i do look at it both ways and i think that that is part of today's culture is like this is acceptable because there's so many other broken games that i wonder if studios do look at that like we know all this shit's already broken but we'll just put it out because this game came out the other day 
Dead Island 2, and it had way more issues than this did, so we'll be fine. As long as our core is there and we think we're going to review well, we'll just get everything else on mop-up. And it's like, yeah, you can do that, and I, I talk shit about it now, but fool me once, shame on me, and then you're going to fool me two, three more times, and it's always shame on me because <laughs> I keep fucking doing it. Well, it kind of ties in with this other one, too, is that there was a huge day one patch initially, regardless of the bugs. There was a huge patch that you had to do that was putting the game, um, a lot of things, on PC, I believe it was over 155 gigs. I think on PlayStation, it might have been over 150. On Xbox, mine was 134 gigs, which is insane because that's bigger than the last Call of Duty game. So what is what about this game is making this such a big file? I mean, a lot of people are saying maybe it's uncompressed files, and I'm sure that has to be part of it. But there's no way it's as big as a Call of Duty or even a Destiny. And a day one patch that's going that that nobody knew about before. Nobody's saying, hey, make sure this needs to be done. Make sure this is already put together because not for nothing, but 150 gigs on if you don't have expanded card and expanded space on your hard drive that's a lot of real estate to already take up and you know do you want to start deleting stuff i mean i was putting some stuff on i had to delete a couple games i mean it's not that games shouldn't take big files i guess but we're supposed to be moving to where things are getting smaller and you're telling me that jedi survivor is bigger than a call of duty game or a destiny game that has a lot more going on so do you think that's something in the future they're going to be able to compress? Or, or do you find it even ridiculous that this thing's coming out at w over 150 gigs? I don't know if it's ridiculous because I feel like there's a lot of games that are pretty big. But they do kind of genuinely over time find ways to like slim it down. Like Call of Duty does that too. Like here we can do this and this is how we'll make it smaller. So I wonder, to, that, and that's what I was thinking. I was like, I wonder if this is one of those games that they were just so worried about getting it out that even though it did come out with bugs and stuff, they didn't have time to make it smaller and optimize the storage and just look at that as like, that. that's just a drop in the bucket. You know, if you got to uninstall something, you got to uninstall something, you can reinstall it later. <laughs> like this isn't that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, I that is pretty egregious. But I unfortunately, I do have one of those expansion cards For and i say if you want to not worry about it i say unfortunately because i don't ever worry about game sizes so it doesn't affect me so i'm kind of looking at that i don't want to say rose tinted glasses but almost yeah because i did that same idea that i'm like ah it's not a big deal i'm looking at it from someone with a standard box yeah it doesn't so, have any type of seagate expansion or anything it's like what one, one terabyte minus everything else you're getting roughly 900 gigs right you got your halos on there, you got your call of duty of your destiny this game's taking up 150 like that is I, in my in my mind that's just ridiculous because i'm i've been playing it and i'm pretty far this game isn't i mean it's big but it's not it's not that big well here i am sitting on my throne of money with my monocle smoking my cigar <laughs> looking down at you saying get a fucking expansion you're, you're gonna say that to everybody though everybody that like this and playing a game you have to go no, buy yeah no you, have you to go buy an ex internal expansion just to have more than four games on your hard drive I think that's ridiculous. And this game, I don't think, deserves to be 150. Like, there's nothing about that. Like, you don't have the time to compress the files. Yeah, I don't think it should be this big, but it's hard for me to say something about this when I didn't crucify Call of Duty that comes in at bigger at, like, 200. But we understand that. Call of Duty yeah. is huge with a lot going on where this isn't. So I think that's the difference. Is like, I understand if Call of Duty or Destiny are coming out big, there's a lot going on there daily. This this isn't this is even an online game. Yeah. Well, again, I, uh, to, to put it in perspective, Craig's played a lot more than me. I'm only like four hours in, again, because I was traveling. So I've, I, oh, yeah. I've Let's seen... Let's get a little further. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I'll say I've seen it. I've been to like a big open area, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I totally understand with what you're saying. Like, I don't really feel like there's anything here that's like, oh, my God, this is on like the... Uh, this is on the precipice of what we can do with this <laughs> technology, that this is why it should be that big, so... Okay, so the final thing that I think is really kicking this game is that the physical disc is, at this point, useless. So um, this comes to us from Game Radar, and there's a bigger article in the link if you guys want to check it out, but it says, It turns out the physical version of Jedi Survivor does not actually contain the game, at least not all of it. Early copies of the game hit store shelves in New Zealand last weekend, and fans on, and on Reddit noticed some tiny, easy-to-miss fine print on the front of the box that says, Download Required. Apparently, after you insert the disc and install it uh, to your system, you can only play through the intro mission before you're prompted to download the rest of the game. Oh, if man. for whatever reason you're unable to do that, then the disc uh, then the disc disguised as a video game you just bought is useless. So I was asking Andrew a little bit about this because I was going to bring this up and he, he didn't hear about it. So I kind of wanted to hear it in real time. 
this dude that is that is ridiculous there is no reason why the whole concept of buying a physical disc game is that everything in the box is packaged and ready to go there i mean there are people that do not live with strong internet or i mean or internet at all i mean if you're somebody if you're a younger kid and you don't say you don't have internet in your house you go buy physical copies of games the game is supposed to work as intended and I think this is just one more thing where it's like, and if you package all these things together, that day one bugs, huge day one patch, a physical copy if you bought it is now a waste of your time to have to go back and return it. This thing, because we're in a group, I don't know if you read the gamer chat that we had, Kyler was asking me, he's like, is this worth buying like day one right now? And I'm like, dude, I wouldn't. I mean, this is, you got to speak with your wallet sometimes. And we do because we, you know, we like to talk about this stuff. But I was thinking, I'm like, if you were anyone else and you bought that thing physically day one, what a waste of time. Yeah, no, that's insane. I did not know that. Yeah, I figured maybe some sort of like patch or something like that. But no, there's no way that you should buy a game and not be able to play it, it, it broken or not, however however much you want to play it. It should have everything on it. That's insane. Yeah, so I, I just was looking at all three of those kind of put together. And I would just say if you, if you haven't bought it yet, I would say maybe... Give it some time. I mean, let a couple of these things get fixed. Let the, if if they even can. Obviously, the bugs will get will get fixed. But I mean, there's no reason. There's no. There's I wonder no, how this th game reviewed so well. That's we'll, and we'll get to that in a second. You know, with our thoughts. But I just wanted to point out that those were some big things that I think are worth noting. That this game launch. I mean, obviously, there's games that have problems, but I feel like those are three big ones in three very different avenues, and it, yeah. and it hit them all. So overall, man, I mean, that's not a good start for a game that is being reviewed quite well i'm sure it's still gonna sell though based oh, yeah. off based off the strength of those reviews well i was reading that in the uk the uk sales numbers came through and it was for physical copies only and i don't know how many how much people knew about this but it's it's down like 35 percent compared to fallen order in the uk so it's mm. already down and it's only physical sales. they haven't counted digital but i'm like that's not a good sign yeah no that's I don't know. I don't even know how you let something like that happen. Uh, that, that's, that's kind of what I'm saying because you, you've been sitting here being very passive with this. And I'm looking at this going, this is a game that was on everyone's radar. And you're telling me, dude, three strikes and you're out, brother. I uh, I tried to give them two. I didn't know about that last one. I thought that last one like I've, I've been gone this whole time. So, so. yeah, um, let us know if you guys have ran into any, any of those bugs. Have you ran into any bugs since you've been playing? Uh, I have something under my cons. So okay, okay. I'll, I'll because I do want to point out, there was one issue that I ran into that um, I was traveling back between two different planets. And... I don't know what was happening, but when I would land on the planet, the door wouldn't open and I couldn't leave. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay, so I got, I, I'll i kind of chime in oh, was that, that a con? then too. Yeah, that that was one of my cons. Was one of the but we're talking about bugs. Okay. Yeah, so um, I think it's in the second area when you're chasing down the senator. You have BD like hack the door. Um, I think you're supposed to break. Oh, you, oh mine's I think, way after that. I think you pull the first. Yeah, no, mine was towards the beginning. You okay. pull off like the shield for the door or something, like part of the blast door or something, and then BD hacks the thing and the door's supposed to come up. The door opened, and I heard it open, but I happened to turn around to look around and make sure I wasn't missing anything. And when I turned back around, the door was shut. And no matter how close I kept going to it, it would not let me get through. And that's the only way to get through because it's through this like big right. building that I could not get around. So I was like, oh, maybe this isn't the right spot. And I'm like running around, <laughs> and I was like, maybe that was just for like, a BD to scan something that's right. like a part of the database or something and I'm running around the area and I'm like no dude that has to be it the thing's pointing me in this direction on this atrocious map like I don't know what the fuck how to get this thing open and I don't want to have to restart and then just finally as I ran back towards it it opened and shut really fast but then it opened again slowly oh, and it let me through and I'm like oh okay cool I was like that was really annoying because that was like literally like five minutes I'm just running around like trying to figure out where to go yeah mine I was so the door was locked so I was like okay maybe it just glitched so I flew back to the other planet same thing I'm like fuck so I flew back again nothing the only and I'm like okay so I went to go save on the um the little meditation spot turn shut my game off turn it back on and then since it since the uh the quick save it let me it started me outside the ship already i'm like that's gonna be annoying if i have to do that every time but i ended up quitting down the game fully loading it back up travel just to make sure and it was fixed but i was like dude like that would have been shitty you can't get off the ship just to go yeah. do the mission so uh anyway so those are the kind of big things that i thought this we had to point out i mean we got to say if we're gonna talk about the goodness we got to talk about the badness that was with it and it did have a rough start so as far as that goes um We'll kind of give now our thoughts on the game. So I, Andrew pointed out that he's a couple hours in. 
I'm, I'd say probably about 16 hours in, give you, or take. My, I leave my Xbox on, so I never have an accurate clock time. But looking at the achievements, I think there's two story beats that I'm away from beating the game. And I, when I looked it up, I think it said unless you're you know, 100%ing it, the game is roughly 18 to like 22 hours to beat. So not too shabby. So um, the story, uh, and we'll do our best not to do spoilers, because well, at least I will, because... But, I mean, I might say something that slips, but did you want to add something before uh, we get going? I was just saying, do you want to do cons first, since we're kind of coming off of bugs, and we'll end up Yeah, yeah, I just want to point out, so so the story takes yeah. place um, five years after Fallen Order, and like we were pointing out, the, a lot of outlets are giving this game an eight and a nine, so don't let what we're saying earlier discourage you from getting the game. You know, my kind of takeaway is, I'm, we're, I'm getting sick of the point of these day one buys with these day one busts, but... So anyway, it's getting a lot of good you gotta stuff. you got to be critical about it. I mean, that's the thing. Otherwise, it's just going to keep happening. So Yeah. So, yeah, you want to start with cons. Um, why don't you go first since you're earlier, and then I'll kind of maybe dive into mine if they go a little further. Okay, so I just have three so far again because I'm not so far. One of them I had mentioned earlier is <coughs> I feel like there's the same problem with this game that's on the last one. When you look at the map, like, yeah, you can put, like, a bullseye or whatever with where you're supposed to go. But I feel like figuring out the map... It's still really hard to read. It's like atrocious, just like the first one. I felt like that was a problem with the first one, is looking at the map doesn't help me anymore on where to figure out where the hell I'm supposed to go. Like, the only thing I can see is this big glowing thing, and then hopefully I end up in the right direction. I'm like, okay, I'll just keep going in that direction. And then if I come to a dead end, I'm like, okay, well, fuck, I, I don't know where I'm supposed to go, now. I'll try and go this way. Because sometimes, especially now that I'm in like the first kind of open area, a lot of it kind of looks the same with where you're going, mm -hmm. that you have to look for individual things like, Oh, okay, that, I know that I'm at this cliff because that, that moss is on this side instead of a hanging metal grate or something like that. So that was kind of, I, it's not a big thing to ruin it for me because I'm not totally getting lost. But again, I'm just like, did all this work and you couldn't figure that out? Well, um, no, no, why, why we're on the map. Yeah, because yeah. I, I did say, yeah, the map is something that I was reading that a lot of people still are saying, you could have made it a little bit better because I feel like I'm constantly checking the map just to make sure I'm still moving in the right direction. And Because when you get to certain points, even... Even when you're looking at it from like the first floor, second floor, third floor, even that's kind of convoluted. Yeah. It, it all looks like it's kind of smushed together. Where, and I think there there might be an option in the settings that you can change the colors of the floor. I think I need to look into that. But I know you I can, saw something about changing the colors, but I didn't know if that would help. Yeah. So yeah, I think the map is is and there and the map's really big, but we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, I find that I'm constantly looking just to make sure I'm still going to the main objective. And so yeah, I'm with you on that. <coughs> so that's actually con my other one this is more of just like a little pet peeve and then i do have one more con con is constantly every time because there's a lot of stuff to explore for the database or whatever and i like i like to read the stuff i love star wars and i feel like jedi survivor and fallen order are probably the best things to happen to star wars since like the first season of the mandalorian especially uh, the, whatever we're doing here is way better than what we're doing with the movies by far mm -hmm. regardless so i'm enjoying it and i'm trying to get into it is it seems like every few minutes BD has something to, to scan, and I, you gotta hold down for him to get off, and sometimes it doesn't register, so you gotta like do it again, or you're just out of range, so you gotta get a little closer and do it. It's like, dude, why can't you just automatically get off and scan? Because you're supposed to do it with enemies for like achievements, plus sometimes like maybe a gate, or a hieroglyph, or uh, uh, something, anything, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I think it would just be easier if you could set him to like an auto scan to where as long as you're within range, he'll jump off your shoulder and then I could go follow him and like, be a part of whatever. And if I happen to go too far in another direction, he'll just follow me and pop back on my shoulder and maybe I'll miss out on that. Like it should be a thing like instead of me holding down for that time limit, I just have to stand close enough to it for that time limit. Yeah. And then my final con is part of what we were talking about earlier with that patch they have coming in. I do I, – I set mine to uh, quality. Is it quality that's 60 FPS? Performance. Performance. Excuse me. Performance. So I always want it to run better than look better. And I'm still having, like, dips where it, like, chugs, like, a little bit. Especially during fighting. It's kind of annoying. Especially when you have to have, like – a good timing for your parry and stuff like that because otherwise you're just missing it and taking hits plus there's lots of like pop in and um i'm not talking about like just textures either sometimes like a whole area will like pop in and i mean it's not the end of the world but again for something that's supposed to be like a premium triple a title i'm like ah oh, man this is like really annoying and it is annoying when you're playing because it does run, when it does run smooth and it feels really good for the most part, and then you hit a hiccup, that's what makes it super obvious. And I'm like, ah oh, man, that's annoying. Yeah. So is that everything with your cons? Yeah, yeah. Those okay. are my, those are mine so far. Again, 
like we said before, he's a lot further than me. I'm only about four hours in. My biggest con of this game, and it's really dis- deterring me from loving it, is there's just too much pointless travel. And I don't mean it in terms of going from going to go explore a new area because that's what the mission unlocks and you've got to travel. I don't mean that. I mean go simply climbing, grabbing things, climbing through rocks, moving through this and that to simply spend... 10 minutes just to get to the very top of something just to make a shortcut for you to go down. It's like it seems like they're putting I've all done these a of that, they're putting yeah. all these mechanics in there for you to to wall run, for you to jump up, for you to double jump across, for you to do your jump and do it. Yeah, and it's like oh, it doesn't seem like it, it's doing anything and 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 outside of getting you to a shortcut so later on you don't have to do that again. And I feel like this is just filler game. Like all I'm doing is I'm doing this I'll run into a stormtrooper or two. I'll run into a bad guy or two. But it's like, I feel like there's, this is what's wasting my time. And I'm not saying you can't go explore the world. The map is big. There's tons to go do. If you want to go look for the seven uh, legendary monsters, if you want to go do the bounty hunters, bounty hunters, bounty hunters, or if you want to go find all the, the cosmetics, that's on you to go do that. But if you're telling me I have to start, there's this whole thing in the beginning where you have to go meet this um, escort. But you can't climb up the sand because it's falling down. So literally, the first five minutes is you jumping from these rocks, jumping to the next one, shimmying across just to get to the top of this thing. That was a waste of time to for uh, BD1 to hit a thing that shoots a pull down, so you never have to do that again. So I'm like, that. I feel like there's just too much of that in this game. I'm doing constant travel for filler. That's not exploration. I feel like I noticed that right away. That that was almost kind of like um, in the first one when you get your powers. You're, you get like the double jump or something like that. That's supposed to be your shortcut now. I forget what level it is. It's like one of the first planets around with like the big tree. But once you can jump, you go through this whole kind of maze like area. But once you jump, you can get on top of it and it's all like flat except for like a little bit of kind of ups and downs. And you can just run straight back to your ship. And that felt like the better shortcut. And then on the way back, if you have to, you, instead of having to run through there again, you can get on top and go through it again. Whereas now they're like, okay, well, we don't want to take away these abilities, but how are we going to have, we'll just let them keep them. But now it's not making anything a shortcut anymore. Yeah. Now it's just more your Nathan Drake traveling. Yeah, when you get further in it, because again, I don't want to take away from the person that wants to go collect a thon and go find everything. So I'm not, I'm not harping on that. What I mean is when you play one of these worlds, and look at look at how many times you're gonna start. Oh, open up a I shortcut. I noticed that already. Open yeah. up a shortcut. Open up a shortcut. So I'm like the whole co- so the whole thing is this is just me climbing up, and it's like I, that's not what I want. Which leads into my 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 other con is that this isn't there's not enough Star Wars in this for me. There's not enough. It's I feel like I'm constantly just running around, and there are new characters that you get to meet. And I would say that so far since I've been playing, there's been three pretty cool scenes. But I feel like I'm wasting my time running from place to place and, you know, doing this and doing that. And I'm not getting Star Wars out of it. And again, I, I feel like I'm in the complete minority and I haven't beaten the game to see how it wraps up because a lot of people love it. But for me, I'm like, I, you've, I've met I've met a couple characters. One of them, again, so slight spoiler maybe, is this one dude that you meet is, is badass. And I'm like, dude, this guy rocks. I, I hope he's in the next game. I... F- Fight him, dead. That's the end of him. Like that's I'm like that's it. Th- th- one of the coolest characters that's been introduced in Star Wars to me in a long in a long time. And I won't say who it is. You get that you'll probably know. I'm like that's it. That's all you did with this character. To me, it was, Fuck. To me, it was like it's like what comic books do. It's like you, they introduce the Green Goblin in, in number one. They kill him. They they introduce Doc Ock. He's dead. They introduce this new character who was who's badass. And and he's and you know you you bump into him maybe twice. I feel like compared to number one. We were talking about this earlier, where you're constantly getting tracked down by the Inquisitors. Hounded. Hounded. You, like you were saying uh, off screen, you're, like, you're constantly feel like the Empire is chasing you and, yeah, and bringing down. On you, yeah. I don't feel that sense of urgency. I feel like I can literally just go do whatever I want, go, fil- go recruit members for the canteen. I don't feel like there's anything that's really pushing me. The storyline is cool, and the, you know, the main villain so far from who I think it is, is cool, but I'm like that. I'm like, there's not enough of it compared to number one, where I felt like, man, I'm I'm entranced by the the empire and all this. I I feel like that's a little missing. I wouldn't say I'm that far yet, so I can't speak on that. And I hope maybe we have different opinions on it because right now I feel like it starts off very strong, it, it did, with where yeah, I'm at, which is why I was excited. That, and then from I'm, there, it just deterred. So, so far, I'm loving it. But if it does turn out that way, I, I I'll be like, oh, yeah, man. so Cien, catch up, catch up with me on this week, and I'll let you know. Yeah, Cien said the same thing. He's like, yeah, I'm about four hours in, and I'm loving the game. I'm like, yeah, so did I. 
but get 16 to 18 hours in and tell me if you're feeling the same. So hopefully I'm wrong. And, and so I know Gino's going to be playing it. You're, you're playing it. Sian's playing it. I think Denny maybe have started it. So I want to hear your guys' opinions. But Or you guys at home, let me know if, if you think I'm wrong. I just feel like there's a lot of running around and not enough Star Wars in it for me. But let's see. We are running a little long, so let's make our pros uh, pretty quick. Okay. Um, I kind of really only have, like, two big ones for me. One, I like that out of the gate... Well, not out of the gate, maybe like 30 minutes in. There's a lot of customization. So you can customize like how Cal looks based on some of the stuff that you get. But even just to start a clothes, you can change like the colors of all of them from like his pants, his shirt, his undershirt, his jacket. And then you can even remove the jacket. Yeah. And then you're finding a lot of customizable stuff right away. So right now I'm kind of walking or rocking like the Boba Fett like cape yeah. with the little vest on the front. But I wanted to lead that into like kind of the next part too. Is it's not even just his looks, your lightsaber right away. Yeah. There's the, work, a, the workbench cosmetic. Yeah, awesome. the workbench con workbench cosmetic is crazy good from your lightsaber color to how you want it to look to texturize to what if you want it to look polished. All the blade you, choices, all the blade, yeah, yeah the saber it, choices. Do you want it to look brand new? Do you want it to look yeah. ancient? And then that even converts over to BD, so you can have BD looking brand new or you can have him look like beat as hell so yeah. i have him to where it looks like i made him out of like a, bo a box of scraps <laughs> like you can see all his internal wiring and stuff and then i have him boba fett colors and have him beat up so he looks like a little boba fett and then uh my other big thing is i actually so far again I, i'm only a few hours in is i really love cal i felt like he was cool in the first one uh, maybe a little flat and this one it feels almost like is if you're just playing han solo as like a if he Force was either. a jedi yeah. and he is so dope i'm like man this version of cal Kestis, now that he's got his confidence isn't so much afraid but he still has his worries and obviously you got to deal with your anger and his internal problems but just the way he is and holds himself it's a lot better and I, you can understand it for the first game why you wouldn't hate him because again he's a padawan he's not a master he's he's just trying to hide out in this world whereas now you know you're a freedom fighter yeah. so i really like the change that they made to him he's super interesting this time around yeah i think he's awesome and one of the cool things is that when you start the game i think we were talking about it before he doesn't you know they don't just strip him of all of his abilities and you have to learn them all again he starts with powers he starts with double jump he starts with force push right he starts with force um pull so he's got a couple things and then the more you kind of learn his other powers it's not that he you have to do a skill point to learn them. He goes to like these memories and then he kind of remembers, Oh yeah, I can I do that. So like he ended up gaining all this stuff. But the biggest thing I think a lot of people are going to take away is the fighting and the combat. So is, good. It's very intricate. I mean, obviously we know that they've introduced the five stances, which is single dual, uh, double bladed blaster and cross guard. But the skill trees are intricate. I don't know if you've had a time to look at all the skill I, points I was, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's so many different things. There's survivor. <coughs> There's lightsaber and then there's force, but even within like the force, there's confusion, telekinesis, and uh, concentration and things like that. So I think the skill tree of what they've been doing, as well as the combat, is pretty is pretty um, intense. And I'm not playing on the hardest difficulty by any means, but I could see if you were to ramp this thing up that this game could be pretty uh, pretty tough. And then uh, the other thing I got to give a shout out is to the mini game, the Hollow Tactics. Make sure, even though it's annoying to scan everything, make sure you're scanning every enemy that you beat because every enemy that you beat becomes a figure that you can play in the game. And then the game is kind of, if you're watching on YouTube, you can kind of see it. Everyone has a point structure. So you put them into like a little, um, like a 10 by 10 or 10 by 2 grid and you build a team and you go out and fight the other team like what they have. And it's in waves of three, but I got to give a shout out to don't sleep on the B2 droid. He's the one that I've been using. It's the, you know, the kind of big triangle ones that just shoot. Dude, uh, they wreck shop. So as far as that goes, man, I think the game is great. And like I was saying earlier, I'm not harping on the other stuff. There is a lot to explore. There is a lot to collect. There's a lot to just kind of explore these places and find random people to recruit. Because I was on um, the planet with the bar just kind of running around exploring, and I found these two dudes sitting up here, and they were what they were waiting for someone to come and fight this this beast. And when I beat it, that's how I unlock the hollow game. That's how it goes into your bar. So there's tons to do, and there's uh, lots to go see. So, uh, with that being said, the game I think is is good for me with the, the things I've been running into and what I and what it's been lacking. I don't know if I'd give it an eight or a nine. Maybe when I beat the game. My whole mind will change. I'll be like, yes, that's how it needs to be. But as of right now, I'm thinking more like seven. And seven's not bad. Seven's still good. Seven, seven, five. But for me so far, it's not an eight or a nine. I reserve judgment until I beat it. But I think even at a seven, like I was saying before, 
I hope you're listening. This thing is still better than the movies. By far. Yeah, people are saying if, if the next game they put out is just as good as 1 and 2, then this will be the best trilogy of Star Wars that's come out in like the last 20 years. So, um, so yeah, we are running along, but we will answer a couple questions. So uh, leave your thoughts down below, guys, if you've been playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Let us know what you think. So with that down out of the way, guys, let's move into questions of the week. If you guys want to submit a question that Andrew and I can answer on air, you can do so a couple of different ways. You can... Uh, email us at lastcallproductions at gmail.com. You can send it to me um, on any of the social medias at Craig Perales, or you can leave a comment down in the YouTube section down below. So the first question comes from uh, Kelly Jenkins, and she writes, uh, Did you guys see the new Twisted Metal trailer? Was it much to go off, but I definitely want to give it a try. Any thoughts? I, I just showed it to you. You watched it again. What, what were you thinking? Um, I'm not too sure on like anthony mackie is like a lead for anything so i don't really know too much about that i think they should have showed a little bit more uh, because he would by far be the least interesting person in a twisted metal universe they did show some sweet tooth i think he should have showed sweet tooth and maybe another like cult character or something like that from it but it definitely nailed the vibes for sure like when anthony mackie pulls up and he's like doing whatever it looks like what a, a twisted metal live action cutscene would be so i'm like well at least they nailed the vibes on it yeah i wasn't sure exactly what the premise was i know he was supposed to be type of a delivery guy but uh the premise says this in a post-apocalyptic wasteland john doe a talkative milkman with amnesia is given a mission to traverse the desolate world to deliver a cryptic package in order to stay alive alongside the assistance of quiet a rash car thief, Doe faces a life-altering opportunity but must confront ruthless marauders and deadly and destructive vehicles to secure a chance at a better future. Everything about on paper sounds great. I thought the the trailer, even though it was a teaser, I thought it was shitty. I thought I thought it didn't show what it should have been showing. It's it, To me, it did the same thing that Mortal Kombat did with Cole. Um, Nobody gives a shit about Cole. I want to see Mortal Kombat characters. Nobody knows who this John Doe guy is. Show me Sweet Tooth. I mean, at the ending, I thought it was a great point when you get to see Sweet Tooth. But it's like, show me some of the racing. Show me any of the players. Nobody knows who this guy is. And I get that you're trying to—he's your leading man. But like you're saying, I mean, I'm gonna be following him in the I, show. You could have shown me all the yeah. villains, and I never would have cared if I never saw the main protagonist. So the trailer to me was lackluster. But again, it's a teaser. Hopefully, by the time the the, the, the real one comes out. Um, it's, it's going to actually show, you know, some of the goodness. So, uh, thank you for the question. And the final question comes from, uh, Saberwolf, which I love that name. Who do you like? F Fogor. C -c -c Combo breaker. I used to be more of a cinder, but I think Saberwolf is by far the coolest design. Nice. So, and Saberwolf writes, uh, with Jedi Survivor coming out and getting some decent reviews, what do you think Respawn will do next? Jump straight to making it a trilogy, make something brand new, or maybe even do a Titanfall 3? Love to hear your thoughts. I, that was a good question because I was kind of thinking, obviously, it sucks because um, Titanfall was a good series. And I think even the CEO recently was saying that he would love to do one. But as of right now, there's no immediate plans on the books. I think Titanfall 3 is off the table for sure. Yeah, because you know what? I was looking up and I was trying to say, I'm like, well, what did it sell? Titanfall 1 um, sold 10 million globally. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then I looked at number two. Four million, and when you, two was by far the best. And that's game. what I'm saying. Two's criminally underrated, man. So I, maybe in a perfect world they'll get to a Titanfall three, but because number two they didn't give it attention. There was no, there was no marketing for it. I don't think they're gonna do a new game because there's you got to remember they're still handling Apex Legends, right? And then, but would you think that? I mean, maybe a new game, I guess. You think they'll jump straight into number three? I think they'll conclude Star Wars with a trilogy. First? Yeah, I think why not go ahead and do it? Because I, I mean. If they knock it out again, this will probably be one of the better trilogies since, like, Arkham, and then maybe move on to something else, either Star Wars-related or something else game-related, but you've laid a solid foundation for anyone to work on, or just end Cal's story and then kind of go into the bigger universe or yeah, something. Yeah, and, they, and they've proven that they don't have to be a shooter studio. You know, Apex and Titanfall aside, you know, you look at something like they've done with Jedi Survivor. It made single-handedly the best lightsaber combat we've had. Yeah, and, and all they did was improve on it. Because, again, once you start messing with those stances... You're gonna see how well. How far? How many stances do you have? And then in three, I've got single, dual, and then what? What is? What do they call it with the one dark maul blade? Uh, or is that dual? Du double bladed. Double bladed. Yeah. And okay, so double bladed, dual, and single. oh, I was gonna say. Okay, so hint: if anyone hasn't started it yet, when you get the chance, have you had a chance to go to the shattered moon? No. Okay. When you there's an option to where you can go to the shattered moon, and you can go back to like Jabba or whatever. Go do the shattered moon first because if you don't. 
You're not going to be able to do it till afterwards. And if you go to the Shattered Moon, that's how you're going to get the cross guard. Oh, okay, that's what I want to try to use. Okay, against. yeah. So you, if you go to the Shattered Moon, you can get it earlier than you would later because you're not going to. If you skip it, you won't get a chance to go to the Shattered Moon till like you finish the next planet. But yeah, so I'm using. Cool, thank you. I'm using the cross guard and the blaster one, and and they're all excellent. But I'm using because the other one has range, so I like fighting bosses with that. And then that cross guard is just this big, heavy hitter. But I think Andrew's right. I think what's going to be in the cards is that they'll pro- they'll probably round out. Um, Jedi, and then from there we can probably not talk Titanfall three, but we'll, we'll know the next project. Yeah, awesome. So, guys, thank you for watching this week's episode. That is the end of episode one hundred and sixty seven. Make sure you guys join us next week for episode one hundred and sixty eight. And until next time, guys, my name is Craig Perales. That is Mandrew Montemayor. Cheers. Sleep you later. <laughs>